everyone and welcome back again. Here I've got this sweet corn which is looking really nice so I need to plant that out but I've got to sort out all this plot, lay some paths down, plant, plan where I'm actually going to put everything and uh, yeah there's so much work to do. So every year I design my garden differently, the pathways leading off in different directions and different crops planted in different areas. So I just like to have a bit of a walk about, just do a little bit of planning, see where I'm going to put the paths which I make from bamboo. So I brought you to the other side of the garden to talk about bamboo and its uses in your vegetable plot. Now I grow a few different varieties of bamboo and I use them as stakes in the garden for bean structures, pea structures, and also your brassica cages as well. This blue bamboo is really good for that because it's quite a thick, sturdy bamboo as well. So I also use it for walkways through your garden. So I just lay it on the ground and just create those pathways through each of the varieties of vegetables. And also it's good to cordon off each of your areas as well. Um, so yeah, this is a gorgeous one, this blue. It's so, it's huge as well. It's absolutely, it must be about 30 40 foot high it's absolutely huge really thick and sturdy it's it is planted in the ground some bamboo can just run rampant so i'd be careful of if you are going to plant it be careful of what varieties you're actually going to go for um, this has kept itself contained within about a meter and it's been planted for about seven years i think now and it's looking really really nice um, again i only use it if it's died back i just cut it back and then use those you know, if there's any lying about on the ground or any that's died, I'll be, I won't be cutting it down when it's like this, when it's living and it's looking beautiful. So I've built some brassica cages out of this before. I've also used it just at the sides to hold the bunting up. <laughs> it just looks nice as well. Um, but yeah, let's, I'll show you these other varieties I've got. Now this is going a little bit wayward, this one. It's got a lovely bright orange stem. It's been blown over in the wind. So we've got quite a lot of that as well. It's also really good as a windbreak. But it's quite windy, this garden, so it's good to have that there as a bit of a, a break from it all. Make a way through. So here we have the black bamboo, which again does grow to a decent size as well. Um, and then as you can see, some's died back there. So I can harvest that and use that in the garden. Got a really nice clump growing there. And here are the canes that I'll be using. These I think I harvested last year or the year before. But uh, yeah, I'll be using these in the garden, so I'm going to start laying them out. So as it's all different every year it's just a case of laying it out, see what looks good. I was going to put it sideways like that but then completely changed my mind and thought I'd just have two long straight pathways all the way down and then produce in between and I can just walk around them up and down. You've got to test your pathways see if it's workable for you. I just like these really thin pathways through that I can just about manage to get through because I like to cram as much in as I can do. And I could have put another one in at the end here so that I can get in between produce but I think if I did need to get over the other side while I'm over here I'll just do a bit of exercise and walk all the way back and just go around. Right, so sweet corn. I've got two varieties here and with sweet corn you've got to plant them as far away as you possibly can from each variety. So one of them is going to go over in this corner here and then the other is going to go in this far corner over this way. We've got the red strawberry popping corn and the rising sun. Um, plant them in blocks rather than rows. You need to plant them close together. I tend to do about Seven, seven inch away from one another and then plant them in blocks rather than rows and then they can pollinate each other. So we'll just prepare this ground again. Get rid of any of the weeds or trees that are trying to grow in it. Just add a bit more compost. 
freshen it up a bit and then we can get planting. So I've just got rid of a few more weeds and grass and things like that. Like I say, it just takes over in this garden, so I've got to keep on top of it. So I've um, just prepared the soil. I'm going to put some mulch down. And then I just need to decide which is going in this area, because this is a larger area than that one over there. And I do have more of the rising sun, which is the yellow normal um, corn rather than the small popcorn, popping corn. So these, one, two, three, four, five will go in that corner over there and then the others are planting this bit here. So I'm just going to do some mulching. Look at that, beautiful stuff. Plenty of nutrients in there. Also helps to try and keep the weeds down as well. So I'm just going to do a fine layer over the top. So you just push your finger up like that and then to come to the top. There you go, lovely root system. Beautiful, so really ready for planting. So there we go, we've got some ready there. I'm gonna plant these, like I said, in blocks rather than in rows and probably about seven, eight inch apart. Right, so that area is done. And now I'm going to plant the red popping corn in this triangle area here. We've only got five, I think, so we'll be perfect in that area. Courgette time. Right, I've done so many courgettes again that I could feed everybody in Lancashire. But all this middle section here is going to be courgettes and patty pans. So I've got long courgettes, round courgettes, striped courgettes, green yellow everything really if you are planting them straight in the ground and not in pots you do them about three foot apart i tend to do them about two foot just because i like to try and cram in as much as i can do right, so next on the list is to planting all these courgette plants here um, i'm going to do salad down here courgettes down here and then we'll decide later what we're going to do and these bits down this way um still got the celery growing there and the beans are at the back still got a few more beans to actually plant out there so when i'm planting courgettes i like to dig them in a little bit so that they've got a bit of a moat around them um, this just helps with the watering because they are quite a thirsty plant so just having that little bit of a mulch it just helps keep that water there and just stops it running off into the rest of the garden so it's yeah just water them regularly as well they do lack a lot of water do courgettes so keep your eye on the watering and I'm really excited because I've got an irrigation system coming a solar powered irrigation system so it'll all do the watering for me right onto the beans these are a cossy violet which are a purple french climbing bean i've grown them before they're absolutely brilliant so i'm going to grow them up these obelisks i do have some bamboo cane structures i'm going to build as well but i've got these so i'm going to plant them either side of the poles and one in the center as well and don't forget you can plant beans now direct in the soil we're in may and it's perfectly fine you get these little um, dwarf varieties here and you can just plant them around them. These are obviously the climbing ones. 
But these smaller ones, the dwarf ones, you can just plant in wherever you've got space in between any of your veg anywhere. Just plant them in and they only get to about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. You don't need any staking or any support. So, and it's just a good way of getting some extra produce in your, in your, in your areas. These ones that you plant in the middle there, what you need to do is just put some string round and build a bit of a string structure just to like you can see with the old string I've done there. I've just put a few bits hanging right down and then they can wind the way up. Now then look what we've got here. So I grow some tomatoes in the polytunnel because they produce early and I grow some outside. But look at these beauties. Oh my god. Look at them. So I think we've got a bit of a funky one down here. So look at that one. Funk it. Look at them all. Oh, so many. Oh, and then we've got a few that are still going to ripen. Look at them. Beautiful. This one down here. <gasps> Look at that beast. Where am I now? That's a strawberry and a half, isn't it? Look at that. That smell is gorgeous. Got some more, and one of them has actually sent out a runner and it's planted itself in the weed suppressant there. And it's given us fruit as well. <laughs> Look at that stuck, stuck fast in there. But it's producing. That's a nice bit. Loads of them down here, still ripening up. Same old thing there. Look at that. Well, I'm excited, boys. We're having strawberries tonight. If you're growing these mustard greens over winter, they will have bolted by now and produced flowers. I've left them for the insects to enjoy. Um, but what you'll see is you'll find these pods on the side, which are the seed pods. So inside there's lots of seeds. So I store them, I save them, dry them out, put them in a paper bag and save them to grow next year. I've also done the same with the pak choy as well. I've just left it over the side here to dry off in the sun and then I'll pack them away and use them again next time. So now that the pak choy's come out of here, I'm going to be growing some Chinese leaves along with the onions and the garlic that are in this planter. Um, I do have some overwintered lettuces that are still growing there, which are probably near enough ready to come out now, along with the freckles, which has turned slightly pink. They tend to do this when it's been out in the cold just like we do. <laughs> and then I'm going to take out these mustard greens here and grow a few more lettuces and some tatsoi. We've got some Chinese leaves there and they're absolutely soaking wet through because it's been raining overnight. So I mean, if we just squeeze it out, look. Far too much water in there but we'll plant them out and they'll be fine. So I've just added some new compost on top just to freshen up the soil a bit. Plant these out here, they've got plenty of space either side. I'll push them down like that, so I'm going to give them a little bit of space because it can grow quite big there, so a few inch either side would be fine.
I'm going to be planting some of this tatsai in there. As you can see, the roots have gone all the way around in the base and they're ready to be planted. So anyone that follows me on Instagram will know I had a mystery seed growing and must have accidentally planted in with the tomatoes. So now I did say the leaves look like a cucumber and they still do. So I'm thinking it is, but one sure way of finding out is by sniffing its roots because its roots of a cucumber plant smells of cucumber. So let's have a sniff. Yep, definitely. Definitely cucumber, so I'll repot that on. I don't know what type it is because I'm growing a few, but I'll repot that on because it's in a small pot now, so it needs moving along with this one as well. So these are the pink peppermint celery this year's. Um, thank you, bird, for leaving me a present. So I'm just gonna get these and just prick them out just gently, tease them apart. Being careful not touching the roots, just snapping them. There we go. Yeah, and I'm just going to put them individually in here until they're a bit larger to plant out. No need for any special equipment, just use your finger, pop them in, and away you go. Some of them will be stuck in the compost there. Again, make a hole. Try and they're all clumped together these, so they're a little bit harder work to get out. Right, you get your finger underneath. There we go. celery needs a lot of water because it originally came from river banks and swampy areas so make sure that you keep it well, well watered and then when they're um, probably a few inch high I'm going to plant them in the pot. So this is perpetual spinach this can be grown outside as well which I am doing but I thought I'd just do a bit of an experiment to see how well it would do in the hot polytunnel and it's growing nicely I'll start harvesting some of these larger leaves here and it will regrow. I've just noticed. <laughs> Got a tomato. Wonder which one that is. That'd be interesting. I'll keep your eye on that. Might might just leave that actually. Leave that there. See how that does. These are strawberries. Now I found a a really dried up strawberry that had dropped off and it went rock solid and I thought well it's not gonna do anything but I'll throw it in. Just watered and uh, doing okay. Right, that's it for today's episode. I've come inside because it's blowing a gale outside. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit quiet while I'm talking out there, but there's builders all around and they're all stood <laughs> listening. So I've just been a bit quieter. Yeah, anyway, lots more to do next week. Lots more planting out to do. I've um, got the celeriac, the celery. Uh, what else have I got? And I've got all the squash to plant out as well because they are huge. So I need to do that in the polytunnel. I need to repot and plant all of the tomatoes as well. So lots to do. Please join me again next week. Have a great weekend and a great week. I shall see you again soon. Take care. Bye.